All right, we are back on Morning Run. Our guest with us this morning, as you see from the Kelly firm, Clint Kelly, taking your phone calls, malpractice. Uh, look, the lines are open, so jump in if you have a question or comment. We're going to go till 9 o'clock with Clint, and we'll go next to uh, Greg. Good morning, Greg. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, Greg, are you off again this morning? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, Ash Wednesday, so I got the day off, and good it's deal. freezing cold out there, so. <laughs> good for you. Myself. Good but for it's you. Sunny. Yeah. It's sunny for a change. <laughs> yeah, uh, keeping that vitamin C going. That's right. But, uh, hey, uh, I don't know, I, I guess, how do you, I don't know how to frame this question. It's, say you go into, you go into the doctor's office, and you get examined, and they say you need this injection or that injection. And you get a terrible re re reaction, it's the same as the the last caller, where her husband or her wife uh, got kidney damage and stuff. Um, from what I understand, is any type of vaccines, vaccinations, all the people suffering from autism and all these things related to vaccines, which you guys are going to disagree with, but that's the way it is. Um, uh, there's just no way you could sue these pharmaceutical companies based on vaccinations. Um, vaccination injuries and everything. Right now, the government is, is, is trying to pass legislation censoring YouTubes from all the parents that have YouTube channels about how their children were damaged from the MMR vaccine and have autism and those sort of things. And in 2020, October next year, um, our, our government, our wonderful, um, if you could call it a, a government, socialist government is going to mandate and make it mandatory for all citizens whether you're adult child it doesn't matter every citizen in the united states to be vaccinated all right well nick, nick i'm gonna shoot this yeah. down right now because right. this is a public show yeah greg you're i'm sorry you're just wrong yeah. you're wrong as rain sir and i don't know how much science or education you've had but vaccines work and we've got to stomp this down like a virus and, and kill it because vaccines, it is proven repeatedly time and time and time again. It's because I read medical literature as part of my job as a malpractice lawyer. They do not cause autism. Mm -hmm. We have been, I don't know where this came from. Oh, it came from one crackpot doctor several years ago who has since been discredited. His license is gone. There was another, um, by the way, um, report that just came out this week that goes into it yesterday, and there was in all the news stories. And again, it's not some conspiracy to get money, because here's the thing. Pharmaceuticals ain't making a fortune on vaccines. They're making money on other things, but not that. You are exactly right, well, Clint. Go on. Let me go one step further beyond that, Greg. You're wrong about something else. There is a vaccine compensation <clears throat> fund. There is a federal claim that can be made if a child's injured by a vaccine. It's not gonna be autism, I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. There are other types of side effects that are minuscule, but they happen. Yeah, I'm not, we're not saying that they don't sometimes happen. But yeah. the types of vaccinations we're talking about that have eliminated measles, eliminated rubella, eliminated mumps, eliminated smallpox, Greg, and I bet you got a smallpox injection somewhere on your arm has eliminated death and disease for decades and now we're seeing measles and some yep. other diseases crop up in other states where there has been this anti-vax reaction and there's no scientific proof whatsoever for it and it really concerns me it concerns the fact that i'm one day going to have grandchildren who might be exposed to diseases that we thought were eradicated because there are people that are concerned about vaccines and I'm very sensitive to the argument that government forces things on us. I'm right up there in front with you on that. But this is one thing government must enforce. It's no different than enforcing the laws on the books. It's no different than enforcing fire code regulations and other things like that. There are things that are out there for our safety to keep us alive and keep us from getting sick or dying and vaccines are one of them. And I, I'm just sorry that this is spread like it is and we have to take time uh, mm -hmm. to, to stomp this out, Nick. I mean, it's that serious because our children or grandchildren may one day be at risk if this type of um, misinformation, misinformation to be takes root. I mean, it's just all it is. That's it's just it. flat out what it is. Yeah, so uh, I think you clarified. Yeah. And for others who believe vaccines... I'm sorry, Greg, you're just wrong on this. ...cause autism or hurt you. Um, yeah. The earth is round. It's not flat. The earth is let's round. Let's be clear on that, too. All right, let's go next to Jeff. Jeff, good morning. Hi, Jeff. Uh, hey, gentlemen, how y'all doing? We're good. Um, I have a question. I am a below-the-knee amputee, but that's uh, really irrelevant. Uh, back in November, a surgeon uh, amputated my big toe on my remaining foot and actually part of the foot. 
And uh, to this day, I believe it was unnecessary. I believe I was just a boat payment for this guy. <laughs> and uh, the surgeons, doctors are so inviolable that you, no one will look into this for me. Do well, you have any suggestions? Yeah, when did this happen? Uh, November. And have you contacted a lawyer yet? Uh, I've contacted several of the uh, 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 firms around town, the more notable firms, and no one will uh, look into it for me. Why don't you go ahead and call my office and speak to Michelle. I can't guarantee that I'll take the case, but I will definitely give it a look. And I, I want to tell you what Nick and I were discussing earlier is just a possibility. There are bad outcomes. Uh, even when there's not been negligence. And I know you make a good point that sometimes we think these procedures that are done are not necessarily mm -hmm. required, okay? And I'm sensitive to that, believe me, I am. Uh, but there are situations where we just can't prove that there was negligence that led to the bad result. And that may be why some of these other firms are turning the case down. But I'm gonna give your case a look which is why I want you to call Michelle, you give her the background, and I will get you an opinion yeah. in writing. Okay, and again, I don't know if the firms you called, um, they may be either. fine law firms, but they may not specialize in malpractice. I'll get, you a, but, I'll get you an opinion in writing. Okay, so yeah, Jeff, stick around. We'll have his phone number up here in just a few minutes for you, and you can call. Yeah. Uh, by the way, your office over there in Hendersonville. Yeah. All right, let's go next to Gary. I think we have Gary. Good morning, Gary. Hi, Gary. Hey, Gary. Hey, how you doing? Good. Hey. What's on? I, are you there? Uh, Just turn down the TV and talk right into the phone if you can. We can barely hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's a little better. Okay. Uh, my dad was, was retired military, and he passed away back in January of last year. And uh, him and my mom stood in, in the military uh, nursing home in Clarksville. And around December it was, he was supposedly... Uh, went kind of crazy. They they said they claim, and and in them it, it ended up taking him to a, what they call a rehab center. And uh, he stayed there for about a week or two. And uh, when he came back from the rehab center, he was like heavily sedated, and all he did was sleep all the time, and that, that was it. And uh, my dad, uh, he was a very healthy man. Never smoked a, a drink a day in his life. But he was a diabetic, and uh, he was, you know, real good about take, taking his insulin shots and everything. But next thing I knew, I get a phone call saying that he passed away on July, I mean, on January 9th. But my question is that uh, what did they do at, at, at the rehab center that caused him to actually to, to die? You yeah. know, because he was a healthy man. Did Gary, did you say that he passed away in January of this year or January of 2018? 2018. Mm. Okay. Um, it, this is going to be perhaps a close call. Now, as we've talked about, the statute of limitations is one year from the date that you discover mm -hmm. that there was wrongdoing which led to an injury. The question here for Gary is when did he or the other family members first suspect that his father had been the victim of wrongdoing. That's very, very important. To How know. would you prove that, Gary? When do you think you did start thinking it was odd? I mean, was it when he died? You said, "Wait a second, yeah, that's crazy. He was healthy." Yeah, because what it was, you like, hey, I live in Nashville, and my parents live in, live, live in Clarksville. Because I said my dad was retired military. Okay, I you guess know. then, because see, you would think he probably was surprised the day his father died. I, I'm sure he will. It's going to be a close call. Okay. It's, it's going to be a close call because the argument that the defendant, whatever it would be, whether it's the federal government, military, whether it's a hospital or rehab center, is going to say, look, you know, you had one year from the date of discovering the wrongdoing to bring the claim. Now, I'll say this. Under the Federal Tort Claims Act, because I'm not sure who the defendant is here, but you get mm -hmm. two years instead of one. Okay. So he might still have a timely claim if it's a federal case. If it's a federal case. But um, it's it's, I just I don't know what to tell you here uh, in terms of whether or not this is really a case or not because, I mean, sometimes people come home and they're just not in good shape. Yeah. Now, if he was healthy, I mean, if if he calls your office and she's getting information from him. I guess I you would to, want to know what kind of treatment he was getting exactly. and what his condition what, was. What is, I need to know what his condition was going into the rehab center. 
is, is what we call his comorbid conditions. Okay. And I need to know what kind of treatment he was getting, what, what is alleged to have been the mistreatment, and also uh, what the cause of death is. Mm -hmm. I, I hope someone did an autopsy. If they didn't, you know, yeah. sometimes medical records are pretty good <clears throat> at describing cause of death, but I need to know what that is in order to make a judgment. And I got to know who's the right defendant here. Is it a governmental entity? Is it a private hospital? Is mm -hmm. it, you know, he said it was in Clarksville, so it is a Tennessee case. Those are things I'd have to know to make a, a judgment, but that's okay. what Michelle's for. Okay, so yeah, Gary, again, mm -hmm. uh, another caller that we should just refer. We'll have the number up there for Clint uh, that you can call at the end of the show. Um, we'll get all the information out there. Give him a call and see. Do we want to take a quick break? That's what I figured. We'll take a break mm -hmm. and be back with more phone calls for Clint right after this.